Hello everyone and welcome. This is a follow up to my video on how to get into orbit where I built this simple rocket and showed the basics on how to get into low carbon orbit. And although my experience with flying this rocket was like this, many other people's experience flying the exact same rocket was more like this. So in this video, I'd like to address what is going on here, why this is a challenging rocket for new players to fly and what simple modifications we can make to make this a much, much easier rocket for people. Well, let's get started. So here is the rocket in question, the third rocket in my tutorial series. And before I get into modifying this, let's take a quick look at its stats because I do want to replicate or even improve upon what its stats are. So if I go to my Delta V tab and put it onto vacuum, I always, when I'm talking about Delta Vs, always want to be on vacuum because that way you're comparing apples to apples. It's a consistent number all the time. And we can look down here and it says 4,048 meters per second of Delta V. I want to have that same amount or more on my new rocket and if i go to sea level i want to take a look at its launch thrust to weight ratio of course it's going to be at sea level at launch and the launch thrust to weight ratio is 1.34 i like to have that in the 1.3 to 1.35 range so i want to replicate that okay let's close all this and let's take a look at this rocket. Now, what people were having a trouble with is that rocket flipping over on them. So one of the things that I did recommend in the comments, and I ended up pinning this comment to the top of the comments of that video, is to replace the tail fins with larger tail fins. Larger tail fins do make your rockets easier to fly and we'll get into the why of that very very shortly. But the other thing I did, a lot of the problems with this rocket are precipitated by the fact that it has four materials bays on it. I was just wanting to get as much science as I can. It would be much easier if we just reduce the number of materials bays. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off three of them and just have one materials bay. If you want to collect more materials bays in different situations, then simply launch this more than once. But for a rocket for your first time in orbit, let's keep things as simple as we can. I'm also going to, for now, take off all of these radio boosters. And if we take a look at our, let's put it back on vacuum again, and let's turn the thrust of this right up to the top and take a look at the thrust that it has right now. It's 3.2, that's a lot of thrust. It's better to get this. This is gonna be an upper atmosphere rocket when this thing comes on. So I'd like to get this in more around the two range. So what we're gonna do is simply, well, add on more fuel cans. I mean, why not? We're gonna add on three more fuel cans to replace those three I think I have a ghost one right here, yep, <laughs> to replace those three materials bays that we just took off. And there we have, there's a nice rocket, thrust away 2.14, if anything, maybe even still a little bit high, but this is something that's looking pretty good. Not getting into space just yet, doesn't have the delta V that is required, but let's take a look at something that I didn't talk about in this video. It's something that I talked about actually in a video that was a little bit after that one, and that is these three buttons that are down here, and in particular, the first one, the center of mass overlay, and the third one, the aerodynamic overlay. If you're having trouble with your rockets flying and flipping out, almost guaranteed it has to do with what's going on here. So let's put on the center of mass overlay. And we get this orange and black ball that represents the center of mass, the place where all the mass of this rocket is equally distributed around. If you tied a string to this rocket and hung it from that, it would balance on this center of mass. The other button here, let's take that one off and put on the aerodynamic overlay, puts on this blue and black ball and it represents the center of all of the aerodynamic forces from the air rushing over this rocket. From here on in, I'm gonna to refer to this as the center of drag for this rocket. You want the center of drag to always be behind the center of mass in a rocket. Think of a dart or think of an arrow, right? Which has a lot of mass towards the front and the head. And then towards the back, we're gonna have fins or feathers to help bring that center of drag 
backwards. Something flying through the air is going to want to lead with its center of mass. It's going to want to go through the air with the center of mass forward. So if the center of mass is behind the center of lift, that's when you're going to get a rocket that's going to want to flip around and go backwards on you. And to demonstrate that, why don't we take this rocket we have right here and just very quickly launch it. And we're not going to go into space or anything like that. We're just going to demonstrate what happens with the center of lift and center of mass and how the rocket behaves when you get those things right. So we're going to put on our SAS. And what you might be noticing, by the way, is even though Jebediah here is a level zero pilot, like you would have at the beginning of a career mode, he actually has all of his pilot abilities here. This is a bug that's in 1.11 that as of this moment has yet to be resolved. Hopefully that will get resolved soon. But for this video, I'm going to pretend that Jeb, well Jeb is a level zero pilot, but I'm going to not use any of these additional features. Simply the SAS that he does get at the beginning as a pilot and nothing else because I want to keep this true to where you would be at the beginning of a career mode. All right, so we're going to turn the throttle up, not quite to full because this thing actually does have quite a bit of thrust, and we're just going to punch it. Maybe a little bit more thrust. <laughs> there we go. And the aerodynamics start to take more and more effect as you build and build speed. So we're going to let this thing build some speed, get over 50 meters per second, and I'm going to take the SAS off. And notice how it's still more or less starting to go uh, in the same direction. It's drifting a little bit to one side because right now there's absolutely no control. It's just doing what it's doing. But watch what happens if I knock it over towards the side. And I can knock it over quite violently towards the side. I'm pushing, look at the yaw, I'm pushing as hard as I can. And it does not want to get away from that prograde vector. No matter how hard I push, because the center of lift is so low on these rockets because of this big tail fin, I can't get it to come off of that prograde vector even if I wanted to. Okay, let's revert this flight back to the VAB and see what this is like without the tail fins at all. So we're going to do the same thing, SAS on, we're going to throttle this pretty close to all the way up. We're going to let it go straight up. Let it build up some speed so that aerodynamics starts to become a factor. If you find that your rocket flies fine at the beginning and then all of a sudden later in the launch uh, it starts to flip out. Well that's the reason why. It's because you've now picked up so much speed. Aerodynamics are taking control. Take the SAS off. Still it is kind of still going more or less in the direction that it want that you want it to. Oh, it's but it's hanging by a thread and in fact I'm not doing anything. It's doing this by itself. Over it goes. And even if I try to bring this back onto the prograde vector, <laughs> this thing is very, very difficult to fly. It doesn't want to go, it wants to lead with its back end because that's the, where the center of mass is and the center of lift is up way too high. So if you're having your rockets behaving like you're seeing this one behave, bring that center of lift down, you do it with adding on bigger or more tail fins. Okay, let's put on some boosters because we can see right here I do not have the delta V that I need, so we're going to put on some radial decouplers. I'm going to just put on two of them. And we're going to get our familiar BACC thumper SRVs. Stick those on there. We'll put some aerodynamic nose cones on the top. And again, talked about this in the video, what really helps these things separate more cleanly is if you use the move tool to slide them downwards. So when this decoupler pushes off this booster, it's pushing it up fairly high, which will tend to push the top of the booster away from the rocket, which will help them peel away from the rocket rather than to come back in and crash into the rocket. All right, now that we've got that, look at our Delta V, 4,115 meters per second. I mean, this is gonna do it. We have simplified things a lot. Let's take a look again at our center of mass and center of lift overlays and notice where our center of lift is. Actually, the center of lift has not moved that much. What's, what's happened is the mass of these things has pulled the center of mass of this thing downward. So we need to bring this center of lift down and how are we going to do that? 
more tail fins of course more tail fins so I'm gonna add some of these smaller tail fins and I'm adding them I'm gonna put two of them here and notice there's gonna be one on the other side and another two here I'm not adding them to the core stage because I know the core stage is fine I'm adding them just to these boosters so that when these boosters are gone and I don't need these anymore um, they'll be gone too and I lose that extra mass and notice now where the center of lift is well behind the center of mass this is the kind of situation that you want let's take a quick look at our launch thrust to weight ratio again put this on sea level 1.98 way too high we're gonna bring that down again to the 1.3 to 1.35 range I don't know in my own games I become obsessed with getting this to always 1.33 I don't really have a good explanation as to why I'm obsessed with that just that I am there we go 1.33 that's a personal thing okay let's take off this and in fact let's save this as our new rocket this is third rocket B version B and let's fly this thing and get it into space Just to remind people of getting into orbit, go straight up for the little while until you've picked up some speed, at least 50 meters per second. And then once you've gotten that, you start knocking it over to the east. Now this rocket really is not wanting to come over. It really wants to just stick to that prograde vector. The only actual control mechanism on this thing right now are the reaction wheels way up here in the middle cockpit. Take a look at my pitch and my yaw things trying to keep this thing going the way I want it to go. It's kind of ironic but as you unlock more parts the, you actually can build rockets that are easier to fly as you get aerodynamic control surfaces, more gimbaled engines, more reaction wheels that you can add but uh, you know it's it's getting the job done. But the thing to notice is I couldn't get this thing to flip out even if I wanted to. I again am pitched over as hard as I can. Let's lose those. Oh, a bit of a staging mishap, but that's okay. And again, notice that we're on to this rocket. And again, let's take the SAS off. I can knock it over. It it wants to be on that prograde vector. Don't want to wobble around too much. No. <laughs> there we go. But I don't even have to put in inputs, right? This thing is flying completely on its own, and that's what a well-balanced rocket will do for you. I have the SAS off. My hands are away from the keyboard, and it's just tracking right along with this prograde vector perfectly. Okay, I'm watching my apoapsis. i got to cut this at 80. There we go. Now we're going to ride this up. And we're going to circularize and just to remind people with how this works want to keep an eye on my time to apoapsis we don't want that to get down to zero i'm going to put this right down on the horizon and as we get close to around 30 seconds we're going to start throttling up and apply more thrust if you notice this time is going down quickly less thrust if you notice that the time is not going down very quickly. In fact, I'm noticing the time is not going down very quickly. More thrust now. And of course we're going until our periapsis uh, matches our apoapsis or gets pretty close to it. And if you find that you're getting wonky orbits, don't worry, that's pretty normal. It takes it takes practice at the beginning of this game. This game takes a lot of practice. Lock it onto program. Oh, I can't do that. I forgot, Jeb, you don't, we can't really do that lock on the program. <laughs> We're pretending. We're pretending. Okay, the time to apoapsis is getting away on me, so I just cut thrust and let ourselves catch back up to our apoapsis. Let this time get very close to apoapsis. Notice that our periapsis is negative 88 kilometers. It's almost out of the surface. Let's start throttling again. Now we just want to bring up, oh, it's an reduced throttle because our apoapsis is getting away on us. And we will cut. That's pretty good. <laughs> there we go. 83 by 80 kilometers. And there we are. We are now in space. Jebediah can do all the things that he wants to do. And I'm hoping if you're someone who's having trouble having your rockets flipping out that this video will help you out. 
And if you're having trouble flying low-tech rockets like this one, there's plenty of science still around the KSC. Why not scrounge around a little bit more, unlock some better tech. These rockets do get easier to fly. But in the meantime, I'm going to thank everybody for watching and hope to see you for the next one.